Some people, when getting into a sport, think, I'm too old. It's, uh, I'm past it. There's no way I can be successful in this sport because of that. Today is a bit of an information from the other side of that story. Today we're talking to Vidal Riley. And Vidal Riley got into boxing at such a young age. And this is his experience on that. For me, I do not believe that there is an age that you should get into it. I do, I do not believe there is a cutoff point. Some of the greatest boxers throughout history got into it way past there when they should have got into it. But here's Vidal Riley getting in at such an early age. So this is an interesting story. This is information I feel that you should use to make your own decisions and, and decide on your own thoughts. And it's just a bit of information that you can, you can have a bit more clarity with this. Today's video was sponsored by MulliganRoads.com, the best motivational clothing brand in the world. The new Rise and Grind t-shirts have dropped. Um, the whole new gym series, the hardest work in the room t-shirts, the Inspire Change t-shirts, uh, and much, much more have dropped. And they are linked down below. Get them before they are gone, guys. But all of that is making this possible. So thank you so much to everybody who's been doing that. Before that, is the only path you can take to get into sport is jumping in at an early age? Can you be successful after that? Well, here's Vidal's story on how he got in at a young age. Let's take away some experience from this video with Vidal Riley. I'm your host, Jordan Mulligan. Let's jump into the video. So I was born in Hackney, East London. Um, grew up there, was there for eight years moved to Tottenham, which is North London, North East, so not far, just down the road. And that's where I would say I developed into, you know, real consciousness to know what's going on. I'd say those were the more, those were key years for me maturing and developing. But yeah, not the, not the best areas um, to, to grow up in, but I'm lucky I had a good household to be in. Both parents, mother, father, there younger sister as well so a lot of structure in the household regardless of what's going on on the road but I wouldn't want to grow up anywhere else like how I am is how I am because I grew up there like I, I value it to the fullest and I would never change it um, because having the structure at home and then outside having the, the reverse it creates a balance you know it's not too much of one thing so I feel like that's contributed towards my character a massive amount. I feel like you touched on it there, but like mm. if you were to describe like what your childhood was like, mm. like just a little bit more of that. So I'd say it was structured, it was regimented, and I didn't like it. I hated it. But as I've matured into an adult and look around at my peers, again, I wouldn't change it. At that time, I would have changed it. My dad's in the room right now and I'm being honest, he knows I'm being honest. It, I wasn't a fan of it. I wanted to just do what everyone was doing. If I could be out, I'd be out. If I want to Right, I want to ride my bike like everyone else. I want to just hang out in the summer holidays. My mum wouldn't let me do that. She wouldn't let me just be out in the summer just riding my bike around the block. She said, no, you're going to go to an adventure um, camp for like two weeks. You're going to rock climb. You're going to do something. You're going to have something to do with your time. If I wasn't in the boxing gym, I wasn't in school, it's not about just having free time because that's when you just go and start doing your own thing. So it was very structured know what time I'm going to bed, I know what time I'm going to get up, I know I should revise here, I know I should train here, and it's installed into me. As an adult living by myself now, I still don't just free roam and do what, any, anything I want to do. I've kept structure to my life, and I'm extremely grateful for it now, but hated it back in the day. <laughs> um, this one shocked me, like, doing a bit of the research for this is, two years old, getting into boxing, yeah. yeah. So how does that happen? And also just- yeah, I, found out some, I found out some new stuff today, or well, stuff I've heard before, but being reminded at punching a little kangaroo apparently in the house, um, putting socks on my hands. I know I've seen pictures of myself with, with socks on my hands. I've definitely seen pictures of me wearing WWF at the time, wrestling belts, pretending that those were titles, like boxing belts as well. Um, Little, had my little head guard on, gloves on, and yeah, I just remember being in the living room and just working with my dad. I remember being in the living room, we're just going to work and practicing way more than I know any other child that was practicing at that time. And that is what, again, has got me where I am today. Something that you look at as a kid, you can't see posh on those. So you're like, why? why? Why are we doing this? I just want to play PlayStation. They're playing PlayStation. And then you realize, now the stuff is in, so ingrained into me that we're, we're ahead, we're ahead and now it's just little nuances that are really going to take me through but everything is already there because of that foundation that was built from the beginning. 
So it's, as you're describing that, you're talking about like having your dad around. Mm. Like, what was it like having a father figure who was involved in the, in the boxing world? I don't know where I would be today if he wasn't around. I'm telling you because you need. I feel like every son, even with the best mother in the world, you get to that age, you start pushing buttons. You start testing them a little bit. And if you haven't got that father figure, it doesn't have to be, yeah, see, that's why it's a father figure. It doesn't have to necessarily be your father, but you need a father figure. You know, for me, I'm fortunate it is actually my dad who was there consistently making sure I'm in line. Because there's a few times, you know, I'll act up and my mum can't really hold it at that time. And then I know he's there and it just, you just get that back up and you're like, okay, cool. I need to stay in line and stay on track to what I'm doing. It's ultra important. And especially growing up where I grew up, if you don't have it, you can tell. You can tell the difference between the people who operate without and who has. And I was I'm very fortunate to, to be in a position where I got both my parents around big key figures in my life to keep me on that right track and path. It was interesting actually today, like in the ring, like seeing that. So. Has your dad carried that energy over through today? He, listen, he's not changed. He's not. He's not changed really that much. But he also doesn't treat me like a kid. You see a lot of father and son boxing relationships. This like the father still sees them as the kid punching the kangaroo or the kid that's just you know running around that in the house. He understands I'm a man in my own right. But what's right is right, and what's wrong is wrong. What needs to be done needs to be done. So that always remains but how you communicate and get that across is is the important thing and that's why we don't have any conflict because i know he's only telling me what's good for me and what's in my best interest and he's not talking down to me he's only telling me what will prevent me from being embarrassed under them lights and me and him hate embarrassment so if i'm not doing certain things and those little things lead to that big embarrassment we will clamp down on it he will clamp down on it and i also clamp down on myself which is a I'd say a relatively new thing. I didn't really realize the scale of what I was doing for many years and what the consequences were of not ticking certain boxes. But maturing into an adult, gaining rationalization of what's, what's happening and living for yourself, living for, I mean, this is for my life, you know, this is for my progress. Once I started to identify that, when he's coming down, I'm like, go, yeah, do it, tell me again, tell me again, hit me again, do it again, yes, because I need to learn it, it's, it's essential, and he's only telling me for me, and once you realise that it's not I'm having a go, it's I'm trying to help, you don't receive the information negatively. I mean, I, I saw that in the ring, like, the respect of when he's telling yeah. you, you, you're okay, you're receiving it, and mm -hmm. it's funny, I, I played basketball, and I saw there was a father and son relationship in, in my team, and it was the dad pushing the kid to do the basketball, hated it every time his dad told him something he hated it so that leads me on to my next question mm. is is that thing you know as a your dad's into into boxing mm -hmm. um or, like some people perceive it probably like he's just doing it because his dad's forcing him he's just doing it because his dad's making him do it so how much of it is grew into you loving the sport and that was based say, on your terms i'd say from 18 17 no, 18, 19, that's when I said, you know what, Vidal, if you're going to do this, you got to do it for yourself. Many years before that, it was my dad saying, no, you don't understand what you can get out of this. You don't understand what you can get out of it. He always said to me, I don't, it's, you might not reach the top, top of the sport, but you can make a living from boxing. You'll be able to make a living from the sport. And we've seen in recent years, that's happened. You know, I'm not, I haven't reached world championship level. I haven't reached the level that most fighters have to reach to make a living. But boxing did make me a living and really early. And I can't see it. I don't want to see it. I just want to play out. I want to just play Xbox. I'm trying to be online in the Xbox party. And, and do, that's what I'm trying to do. And then I think when I started working, doing my day job, working full time, people talking down to you and... I don't, I don't like, that. you know, it's not my thing. Some people can be told what to do all the time. I'm not really into it. I need to kind of be my own boss. And when I realized the life I was living wasn't leading me towards being my own boss, I said, you know what, I need to get back into boxing properly, do it properly and see it through. And that's when 
there's no force now. My dad doesn't force me to watch boxing. I ask him to send me clips. I say, send me something. You know, send me whatever you're watching, send it to me. I want to know. I want to be ahead of it. Opponents, future opponents, I wouldn't have a clue before who's even around my division. Now we might say names at the same time. We, we I say, oh, who's this? I haven't heard of him. I'll go watch him myself. And it makes his job easier and it makes me a better fighter. And there you go, that was Vidal's experience with getting it in a sport at such a young age. One thing I would say that is very interesting from Vidal's perspective and Vidal's story is that, yes, it helped him with his skill massively. Yes, you know, it, as, a small per, as a small child, to be able to work through those movements and develop those skills at such a young age is, is a benefit. But there was a point where it pushed Vidal too far and Vidal didn't want to do boxing anymore. And I see that in so many child athletes, in so many young athletes. When I, I got into basketball quite late in my, I say late, around 14, 15 years old, but my friends who have been doing it from the ages of five and six, by the time they got to 16, 17, when I was really starting to enjoy it, they really hated it. They've been pushed into the sport, they've been doing it too long. You know, these kids, it, it, it's, it was draining for them. They didn't enjoy it anymore. There is a balance, guys, there is a payoff. Some of the greatest people in sports got into it late. Some of the greatest people in sports were born into the sport. So it's never too late, it's never too early. I, I don't think there is, a, you can have a broad stroke of it. Today's video was sponsored by MorelegaBrothers.com, the best motivational clothing brand in the world, and the brand new Rise and Grind t-shirts have dropped. Yes. Get them before they are gone, guys. Uh, the new gym series is, has just been dropped and they're designed to fit your body um, very nicely. Uh, the link is in the description. Um, go check it out. There's, there's a hoodie vest, there's the Rise and Grind, the hardest worker in the room vest, all that kind of stuff. I'm so happy with how these have come out. Um, thank you to everybody who supported this. The whole clothing brand itself was designed to pump the profits back into delivering this content for free. So 100% of the profits go back into making this content possible. Thank you so much. It's all a part of the Inspire Change movement. And if you want to be a part of the Inspire Change movement, go move towards your goals with passion and purpose. And somebody's watching. Whether you think it or not, somebody's watching and you are inspiring them. I'm your host, Jordan Mulligan. Have a blessed and productive day. And I will see you in the next one. Peace.